So over the weekend, there was a little bit of a debate around how you test your tactics. Is it better for you to sit down and play through an entire season to know how the tactic is going to get on in every single situation so that you know yourself? Or is holidaying the season enough to give you an exact replica of how that would play out using the AI manager and just going on holiday and getting that information? Does the AI manager make tweaks, make substitutions, just make any tactical changes to the, to the lineup? Well, today I am going to try and find that out. So what we have done, we have jumped into the game here. On screen, you can see what we are trying to achieve. We are going to run the first 10 games of a season. The first 10 league games is all we're going to take a look at here of a Premier League season with Manchester City. Now, we are going to use the exact same tactic for the whole test, um, for all the simulations. Um, we are going to have Edison in goal, Walker, Diaz, Laporte, Cancelo, De Bruyne, Ilkay Gundogan, uh, Bernardo Silva, Foden, Grealish and Haaland. That is going to be the starting 11. And as you can see, I do have the in-game editor active here. So for all of the tests that we are going to do here, I'm going to make sure that all of these players are fit. This is the exact starting 11 that will start every single game in every single test that we're going to do. I'm going to make sure there are no bans, there are no injuries, there are no suspensions, and everyone is on perfect morale. And we are going to test how the AI does versus me. I'm going to play the 10 games and I'm going to put up the results right now and we can start talking through them. But what I want you to do, I'm not going to say which one is which. I want you guys to tell me down in the comments section is test one or test two me playing the game and which one is the AI. So let's get into those first set of results. So in test number one, Manchester City were first in the Premier League after 10 games using GYR's Swans alone tactic with a total of 28 points. It had nine victories out of the 10 games played, also scored 38 goals and only conceded five. The expected goals per game in the test was 3.65 average goals per game, only it giving up an expected goals against per game of 0.68 with a total shots on target percentage of 45.42%. And in test number two, the league position was also first, however, on a slightly less points total of 25. It won eight of the 10 games with a 39 goal scored and eight goals conceded with an expected goals per game of 3.89 and an expected goals against of 1.02 with the shots on target percentage in this test 41.81%. So I'm going to leave these on the screen. Let me know down in the comments, is test one me playing or is test two me playing? So test two was me playing the game. So the test that did worse was actually the human player playing the game as you would expect. I was doing all the press conferences. I was doing all the team talks. I was doing everything. The lineup and all that stuff changed, uh, stayed the same. I was just making changes in game to the personnel and stuff like that to try and get the ultimate response and the ultimate 30 points available that did not happen so what i'm going to do is i want to test a couple of different setups we've got the ai managers this year they all have a different setup of personality so if we look at the current manchester city assistant manager he has all of this information which is beautifully displayed in the tattoo skin which you can get down below the there is a link in the description to this uh, skin um you can see his preferred formations here the 4231 uh, but he's also got a style which is kind of like his dna and how he presents and how he would play in terms of things so we've got a tactical style of a gagan press we've got a tactical style of pass a uh, playing style of passing and a playing mentality of attacking now this is what we are going to now test we've seen how i stack up against the ai didn't do very well so i'm going to test the different variants of ai we're going to find someone with an attacking mentality we're going to find someone with a balanced mentality and we're going to find someone with a cautious mentality we're going to run the exact same 10 tests in the exact same order so let's push forward and see if there's any difference here so we've already got the results of the first two tests on the screen, but let's introduce the results for the balanced AI, the attacking AI, and now the cautious AI. So you can see in all of the tests, 
there was not a huge difference. The, the lead position was first in every single instance with the attacking AI actually securing all 30 points, winning every single game. It also scored the most um, and, and conceded almost the least as well. It was just a regular sim that did a little bit better. Expected goals was kind of in the, in the favor of the attacking AI as well. But ultimately, I wanted to then find out, because this is kind of inconclusive, what would happen if I were to play the games? So I will play against the AI to ultimately find out, do they change things in game? And is it better to have a attacking AI as your assistant manager if you're going on holiday? Let's find out. We're here, first game of the season. We are taking on Everton. Uh, we are Everton, sorry, taking on this Manchester City team. I'm starting with a 4-3-3. I will be switching things up as we move forward as well. Different formations, throwing different things at the AI to see if it can handle them, different shapes, different tactics. I'm going to be trying to be a bit more aggressive, a bit more defensive, and I'm going to try and see what we can do against this system. And we're going to sit here and we're going to see how this game does pan out. So if I submit this team, uh, it doesn't matter so, so much about who I am. Um, obviously, as long as we keep trying to keep the AI guessing, I think that's the main thing. So first and foremost, it is, of course, named the lineup that we have pinned in place. So Edison, Carl Walker, Ruben Diaz, uh, Laporte, Cancelo, De Bruyne, Gundogan, Bernardo Silva, Phil Foden, Jack Grealish, Erling Haaland. So first and foremost, it's named the team as you would expect, because that is what I have done. I have told it to remember uh, that team and that lineup up so we're going to go into the game here obviously there you go you can see the team as it should be this is the first game of the season normally in every simulation in every setup this team is a clear this is a clear win for manchester city so hopefully you know with me at the helm we can potentially do something a little bit different and we've got the data here which we are using obviously of course uh, from the amazing tato skin um, so we will keep an eye on things as they go through the game. Obviously, the highlights will rain in. Uh, I've just set it to key highlights, and we will continue to have a look at things throughout the course of the game. So the interesting one, first and foremost, we don't have the roles, in, uh, the roles appearing here just yet, but that will be the first thing that we will check. Obviously, we'll be looking at stuff like the heat map. Obviously, we're a little bit too early in the game, just after a minute and 14 seconds, but this is interesting stuff that we can kind of take a look at looking at the team's average positions seeing if that mirrors what happened and more importantly seeing if the ai changes anything throughout the course of the game first real highlight of the game is a de bruyne free kick there's not really much i can do about that if that does go in it does go behind for a corner swans alone it is quite powerful on the corners uh, imeric laporte is quite a big target for for the ai to aim for here which they do and they go in it goes to ruben diaz who goes over the crossbar okay so now we have the roles and instructions in that we can take a look at obviously we can't see if they're support duties we can't see if they're attacking duties but we can see the main role so obviously we do have the sweeper keeper, the two fullbacks, two central defenders, a Mez, a box-to-box -box midfielder, two inside forwards, the shadow striker of Phil Foden, and the advance forward of Erling Haaland. Now if we initially take a look at the heat map, so uh, first and foremost, this is 20 minutes into the game here. Carl Walker's playing up really high, so that's going to be something that we will have to take a look at. But initially, the roles are as you would expect. So we are going to praise the team. Despite being away from home, we are going to praise the team and try and keep things a little bit happy uh, because we are currently away at the Premier League champions in this instance as Erling Braut Haaland scores the opener just as I've praised the team. Goes to show, guys, I'm shocking at this game, you know. <laughs> I am shocking. The goal is awarded. It does count. Um, nice free kick routine here towards that far post. Erling Haaland out jumps his man. Goalkeeper potentially at fault there. Initially so far guys, I've not seen anything change in this first half with this uh, Man City formation. If we take a look at the heat map, this feels like it's a little bit wonky at the moment. Let's have a look in here and see if it looks a little bit different. Yeah, it does look a little bit different. It looks like it's displaying slightly incorrectly there. Um, but the positioning on every single player is exactly as you would expect and exactly as it has looked in all of the other heat maps. So. 
it's very interesting to see how this is panning out. Um, obviously, for the first half and for the first hour, I'm not going to change anything too much on an Everton perspective. I'm just going to keep things as they are. And then towards the end of the game, I'm going to start making substitutions. I'm going to try and start throwing some stuff at the opposition because we've been largely ineffective here thus far. I'm actually going to say you're doing really well. Like 1-0 down to a set piece ultimately isn't the end of the world. Uh, let's have a look at some of the stats though. Uh, and let's have a look. Obviously, Man City are in control, as you kind of would expect. In terms of some of the other analysis, we're kind of all sort of running through the middle. They're balanced, nice and balanced in terms of the focal, uh, focus of their attacks. Let's have a look at the passing network as well. Again, kind of as you would expect. Sometimes uh, Phil Foden, that is, going beyond Erling Haaland, potentially. Haaland dropping a little bit deeper. But you can still see the two centre-backs. There's a full-back. Um, Jao Cancelo's up super high on this left-hand side. Maybe they've spotted that as a weakness, but the roles are still exactly the same, guys. If we have a look at the heat map, that has now readjusted itself and as is exactly as you would expect. So nothing changing thus far. Right, so the game has come to a close. It has finished 3-0 to Manchester City, which, as I said, compared to some of the uh, some of the stuff that we have seen previously, not the end of the world. So the lineups uh, and, and the tactic has kind of remained exactly the same, guys, to be perfectly honest. It's not really changed. You can still see GYR, 4-2-3-1, Swanzalona. It hasn't changed at all. The positions have been largely the same. Let's have a look at some of this analysis then. If we dive into the on-pitch analysis, you can see uh, the sort of consistent approach in everything the heat map looks exactly as you would expect so next game i'm going to move into the next game and be the next opposition i'm going to try and tinker and react to the game let's see what happens in that one so now we move on to the second game of the season, Manchester City away at Southampton. Now, what I'm going to do with this one, we are going to use a five-back formation, again, just to give them something a little bit different. This time, we're working on a positive mentality in the GYR, nice to meet you. That is not out just yet. We're still working on it, but it is a five-back. It is something a little bit different for this Manchester City team to come up against. We are going to go into this match, and we are going to see what happens. Obviously, we're just going to, first of all, check that everybody is in as you would expect and yes they are uh, they are all in as you would expect in terms of the Manchester City lineup I'm just going to send my assistant to this and we're going to go and dive into things obviously we've got this five back here which again something different for Manchester City to try and break down here and let's check this formation so yes everybody is in as you would expect I did jump in and make sure that they had the perfect morale they had no injuries they had no suspensions I did jump in and do that just to make sure it was as consistent as humanly possible with the other tests and the other data that we have collected so let's dive in and see how this five back can get on Okay, guys, this is really interesting because there's been a couple of shifts around in personnel. So on the Manchester City side, they've made a couple of substitutions. As you can see, I will highlight them. Nathan Ake has come on at left back. He is now still that fullback, that role, that position has not changed at all. Um, Bernardo Silva has now dropped into the Mazzala role, which is very interesting. Phil Foden has come off, so Kevin De Bruyne has taken up that role as the shadow striker. Alvarez has come on on the left-hand side, and Riyad Mahrez has come on on this right-hand side again. The roles are staying exactly as you would expect. The heat map looks almost identical to all the other simulation data we have collected. So just as we close this game out, there was another swap here. Bernardo Silva and De Bruyne swapped around again. Um, the AI is making that tweak in terms of the player for player. But in terms of everything else, guys, it looks identical to what we've seen thus far. If we go into the analysis again, the heat map looks exactly the same as you would expect. There were no role changes to write the course of the game from the assistant manager so let's move into the next game shall we rather than you guys sitting here watching me play effectively against the ai what i'm going to do is i'm going to play through all 10 of these fixtures and see if there is anything conclusive that i can find out of these first 10 games of the season so there's 20 minutes of this game to go now and you would start to think that if the ai was controlling this like a human they would start to go for it. Obviously, Manchester City are a much better team as Edouard's in and he scored. Right, amazing. 20 minutes to go. Crystal Palace go ahead. What happens now? What happens now? Does the AI change anything? Hopefully, you will be able to see a definite answer here. We take the lead with 20 minutes to go. Looking at the personnel, the personnel are identical. So no changes yet in terms of personnel. I'd be very intrigued to see what happens in terms of some of these roles. 
let's let the game go on. I'll kind of keep talking as this is going on to see what I can actually identify. So there's been a couple of switches in terms of players. So Can Jao Cancelo goes over to be the right back. Carl Walker gets dragged off. Gomez comes on to play as that left back Sergio Gomez. Grealish and Foden have switched around uh, but not changed roles. Uh, and Rodri comes on in replace of Ilkay Gundogan. No additional progression up the field no players moving around nothing changing thus far as manchester city have a corner which we do clear okay so they've made another change with just over eight minutes seven eight minutes of the game to go including a couple of bits of injury time bernardo silva is now the shadow striker phil foden is out on that left hand side so jack grealish has come off and riyad Mahrez has come on to be that inside forward still no changes in role whatsoever ball into Haaland oh he's gonna score isn't he yeah what a scumbag <laughs> you just can't stop Erling Haaland in this year's game it would appear um as he pulls a goal back for Manchester City it doesn't feel like the game is changing too much like if we look at the stats and stuff nothing has overly changed if we can have a look at some of the analysis potentially is there anything that we can see here over the past like i don't know five minutes or so to see how things have changed because there's been a 15 minute period between edward's goals and erling Haaland's goals and it doesn't seem like anything is uh changing too too much the ai in terms of their positions at the very least hasn't pushed anything forward um, let's see what happens. Let's see if we come under a barrage of attacks from Manchester City. As we go into injury time here. And there's nothing. And it ends as 2-2. If you look at the match momentum, it was definitely swinging with Manchester City towards the end of that there. Uh, but ultimately, nothing really happened. If we take a look at the heat maps for both teams... Let's expand this and have a look at the analysis. You can see the heat maps looking exactly as you would expect here. Uh, and over the past final few minutes, nothing nothing really changed. If we have a look at this data and the advice that's coming in from our assistant manager here. Uh, Tyreek Mitchell's looking tired. Okay, maybe we could change that. We're in control of the match. Passing and getting our shots on target. Amazing. Defenders keep losing Bernardo Silva. It's potentially because... The manager was moving him around positions or maybe i'm giving the game a little bit too much credit there but ultimately in the final few minutes of this nothing changed guys okay so i've just been playing through offline obviously to try and get through some of these games and this is going to be really really interesting i'm in charge of fulham against this manchester city team here we went two goals up in then a harlan scored obviously in in traditional erling harlan fashion we've now gone down to 10 men now, I wasn't going to show you this game, but me actually going down to 10 men makes this very, very interesting. So we are playing our 4-1-2-1-2 four, uh, four, one, two, one, two diamond that we play with Lazio, and I've just lost my defense in midfielder. So I'm not actually going to change that. The game is currently 2-1. As you can see, Man City continuing to play in the expected formation. And if we have a look at their heat map, again, it's kind of as you would expect with a slight, slight, light diversions maybe either way in terms of where Erling Haaland's being positioned in this particular game and Phil Foden they're slightly off either side but other than that it's nothing huge going on but now they're against 10 men I'm intrigued to see what happens here to see if things start working and they continue to push up the field we've seen this have a high line previously or do Man City just do exactly as instructed by you or by me in this particular instance by me to just sit there and continue to play their current game despite being against 10 men it doesn't seem to be mattering at all the heat map is showing that their positioning isn't really shifting up the field to try and give it a go more that it doesn't feel like there's anything in particular extra that is happening considering they are against 10 men Duffy heads that one back to Leno. There's 15 minutes of the game to go here. This is exactly where you would think that Manchester City, at a goal down against 10 men, would start to throw the kitchen sink. We're not going to do anything to change our tactic either because I just want to see what happens as Alvarez has a long-range effort there. It goes just wide. Nothing is seemingly happening. Uh, we've had a couple of changes in personnel for Manchester City, but nothing else beyond that. Uh, as Gomez fires into the penalty area, we clear that initial danger. Cole Palmer is on as a substitute, uh, and that gets knocked behind for a Manchester City corner. 
the match momentum's probably going to switch into their favor, which you kind of would expect anyway, but the chances aren't necessarily ringing in just yet. So Leno with another good save there as we approach 10 minutes of this game to go. This would be a huge result for Fulham in this particular instance. He gets it launched. Oh, if Mitra had a little bit more pace, he could have maybe brought that down and ran in one-on-one -on -one against Edison there because Man City are playing high, but that is part of the tactic anyway. It's got a high defensive line on it. They've made a couple of personnel changes. No actual role uh, switch-ups just yet. Phillips into Alvarez. Is he going to cut it back? He does. Gomez block it. Goes up into the air. Haaland forces a save from uh, Bernd Leno there. This is very interesting to watch because I have no horse in this race either way. I just kind of want to just see what happens. Uh, to see if the AI does start you know turning that cog and trying to make a few more things happen here are the personnel changes though gomez has come on at left back cancelo's gone over to the right back position uh calvin phillips has come on this time as the box to box midfielder alvarez is coming on the left hand side mares on the right hand side and cole palmer has come in as that shadow striker roles have stayed exactly the same though and in terms of their positioning on the field it doesn't look like they're they're driving forward at all um Let's see what happens in these final few minutes. Obviously, you would expect the 10 men Fulham to start to tire here. Uh, but this is deliberately why I'm not making any changes as the Fulham boss. Because I just kind of want to see what happens here. Uh, Mitro gets it down. Okay, back to Man City to start this attack then. What are they going to do with this attack going into this final five minutes here? As it goes into Cole Palmer. Ball comes across. Duffy gets it clear to De Bruyne. Gomez goes outside. Gomez. Ball's in the air. Leno gets his hands on it right. We are going to actually... Hmm, we're going to start time wasting. Uh, just to, We're not going to play out the defense. We're going to go slightly shorter. Uh, we're going to go at a much lower tempo. And we're going to be more frequent in terms of our time wasting. We're going to be more disciplined. We're not going to work it into the box. We're just going to... Just going to sit. Just going to sit exactly as we are. Be a bit more disciplined. Time waste like heck for the final five minutes. And make Man City come at us here. As Leno throws this one out to Duffy. No silly mistakes here. Because uh, that's what it was that uh, made us concede. It was a sloppy mistake. As uh, Reed flies in there. Into Cole Palmer. Gomez. Haaland. Equaliser. Is he offside? Is he offside? Mm -hmm. Going to VAR. Goal disallowed. I thought he looked a little bit off, and he is here. Sergio Gomez with the assist to Erling Haaland. Chalked off. Uh, he is quite a way offside there, so that is good to see. Uh, it looks like they're, they're, they're trying, but nothing, nothing overly new here. And it's a big result for Fulham here at full time. Nothing changed. Again, when they were against 10 men, it was just changes in personnel. No more attacking intensity than is already desired from that particular tactic. Okay, so I know I keep saying that I'm going to come back at the end, but there have been different scenarios that I want to show you. And we're playing as Manchester United right now. We are currently 3-2 down against Manchester City, who have just had Jack Grealish sent off. So I will be very intrigued to see where Mr. Grealish He's currently playing on the left-hand side as that inside forward. If we have a look on the touchline tablet, if we have a look on the passing network, that should confirm it as well. Yes, he is that player out on that left-hand side. So now he's been sent off. The AI will change here. Like, there's no way that it doesn't. Initially, it doesn't change. So far. Let's see what happens if we play the game a little bit longer. It looks like... They're just keeping things as it is because that's what they've been told to do, which is really, really interesting. Now, this doesn't mean that the AI against you will not make changes because, of course, it will. But in this particular instance, when it comes to simulating tactics, as Marcus Rashford potentially makes this 3-3, in terms of simulating tactics and testing stuff like that, it makes no difference. There may be some variation in terms of how your assistant manager is, if they're attacking, if they're cautious. But so, so small as we show with that table at the start. In this instance, though, it doesn't look like the AI is changing anything at all. Wow. 
house. <laughs> wow! City just get it launched. Edison over the top to Erling Haaland. It looks like the team might still win this one, um, which is absolutely ludicrous. I was watching this highlight out of Edison's hands all the way over the top of absolutely everyone. Touch from Haaland, block and joint save from Varane and Maguire, but Haaland gets the rebound and it goes in for a Man City goal. They go four three up but nothing has changed i'm gonna have to switch these around so hopefully you guys can see it but in terms of the man city formation nothing's changed guys they've just left it exactly as they have been told Oh, mix up. Martial's in. Does he make it 4-4? Anthony Martial, the coolest man in the world. But I am just, I'm just baffled. But also not in a way because the AI in this instance as Manchester City has been told to not change from this tactic. They've lost Jack Grealish and they've not changed, which is brilliant. For ta testing tactics, seeing this huge gap here is exactly, ultimately, what you want to see. What ridiculous game this is, by the way. 4-4 going into the final few minutes. It looks like I can actually take some points off of Manchester City, but there we have it. Ultimately, most important bit of information here. If we go on to the heat map and go and take a look at this Manchester City formation, they have stayed in a 4-2-3-1. Grealish with the gap after being sent off is not there they've not changed their tactic they have stayed the exact same there you go guys point proven so we've run all the tests and it looks like in certain situations the ai does not change what they are doing in terms of your roles however we cannot say conclusively if the ai does change anything in terms of player instructions opposition instructions because that is just information that sports interactive just has control of in their secret box of things that make football manager what the game it is so ultimately we will never understand fully the explanation of this but in terms of my testing it looks like the ai does exactly as instructed in every single situation there would be one more scenario that i'd like to see i would like to see a red card for a defender or a central midfielder because when we tested it and jack Grealish got sent off in that game the ai just left a hole there as it was expected i want to know if it would do the exact same if a defender was set off but maybe that's for another day if you enjoyed this video guys please do drop a like on the uh, video down below and consider subscribing if you are new around here and if you want to check out some more fm23 experiments that we've done check out this playlist right here